Hello everyone, welcome to part two of my video series for my featherweight combat robot, Crippling Depression. In this video, I'm going to be discussing all the electronics that went into this project. If you haven't already watched part one of this video series, it might be a good idea to do so, as I'm not going to be covering really any of the overview for this robot. I'm just going to be simply focusing on the ESCs, the battery, and the motors, and just kind of how everything is wired up. So you might want to go ahead and check out part one for the general overview if you haven't already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this robot over to my workbench and kind of do a top-down shot so I can show you how everything is laid out, how everything is connected, and what each component is. So here is what the inside of Crippling Depression looks like. We've got the battery in the center here. This goes over to the power switch. The power switch actually goes down and all the um, distribution happens underneath this battery. Then that goes out into the two drive ESCs. There's one ESC here, one ESC there. And then we have the two weapon ESCs under here and under here. There's all this um, ESD foam to kind of keep everything safe and protected because obviously during combat everything kind of gets jostled around a little bit. And then Underneath this little block here is my radio receiver. It kind of fits inside. There's a little channel under here, and I have my power LED, which is perfectly mirrored to the turn on and off switch. So if I put that back, you can see that the hole for the switch lines up with the LED just for a little bit of symmetry there. And that's about all there is to it. I've also got these two fans which blow down directly over top of the two drive ESCs to help them keep it a little cooler. And as you noticed, I tried to keep everything as far back towards the back of the robot as possible for weight distribution. There's so much weight up here with the weapon that I wanted the battery and most of the electronics further back, at least behind these front wheels, just so I got better um, weight distribution. So let me just kind of disassemble this a little bit and show you each component and show you how everything actually hooks up. Before I start taking everything apart, I just wanted to turn this on just to kind of show people what one of these things is like when you turn it on. So normally the armor plate would be over top of it like that, and then this goes through the armor plate and it goes down into this little um, hole and you turn it like this to turn everything on. I'm going to make sure my radio is on. just as a fail safe in case anything wants to start going crazy. There you go, so everything is on, um, the light's on. And that means the ESCs are connected, so it looks like everything is good. My radio's on because the light's on and I've got connection shown on my radio, so yeah, everything looks good. So let's uh, turn this off and start disassembling some stuff. I want to start by talking about the radio system, which is underneath this little 3D printed block. This is just a simple little block of PLA that I printed. And the receiver that I'm using is an FR Sky X4R, which is a four channel receiver with telemetry built in. This current configuration doesn't have any telemetry, but I actually do have all the current sensors, voltage sensors, and temperature sensors to go into here, and I actually use them during testing quite a bit to determine how much power I needed for the weapon and how much power I needed for the drive system. And the next iteration of this will most likely have full telemetry on everything so that I can transmit that stuff back to the radio. For anyone not familiar with telemetry, telemetry is basically a way to have sensors or data um, from the robot actually transmitted back to the radio. And I'm using um, this Tranis um, X7 radio, which has telemetry built in. So on the screen down here, I could actually see temperature, RPM, and um, current and other things like that. And this was actually very useful in prototyping everything because I could actually see the RPM of my drive motors, I could see the current of them, and I could kind of figure out how I needed to scale all the ESCs for it. So um, yeah, there's two little um, bolts right here that I need to undo, and that releases this little module. And you might be able to see that the antenna wires are traveling here and there. So basically this whole length is being used for the antenna wires for the receiver. So I'm just gonna remove um, these two bolts and I'll show you what's underneath this. So underneath here, you can see I just have the um, radio receiver and I have a couple pieces of foam 
and this is basically just a channel or a slot that um, the radio just kind of fits into. So normally it has a little bit of play in there, but I just added the foam so it actually kind of seats in there nice and snug so it can't really go anywhere. And the wires all kind of go underneath this battery compartment and actually kind of go out to the ESCs like that. So this can't really go anywhere. Um, going down, it's gonna hit against the ESD foam. It can't really go up, so it's kind of just well protected and can't really go anywhere. And then I also have a couple of wires um, directly into the receiver that go into an LED that is just kind of hot glued in there. And you can kind of see the lens got ripped off the top of it, but it actually still works. So um, yeah, that's how that is. Let me just put that back. And um, looks like one of my wires actually got disconnected, so I'll have to uh, put that back on or something. These receivers are actually relatively expensive, so it's actually worth fixing. And this one actually has much better heat shrink. That's interesting. So let's talk about the battery. The battery is a Turn G Graphene 3 amp hour 6 cell battery, so uh, 24 volts. And this is a 65C discharge or 130C peak discharge. And um, this was pretty important. I basically designed a lot of this compartment around the battery. I had to kind of pick this battery first um, because in my testing, I found that the drive ESCs were pulling upwards of 50, 55 amps a piece. So in hard driving, I needed about 100 amps worth of current here. And in full spin up, I was doing, and eh, let's say somewhere around, you know, upwards of 100 amps for each of these. So there's a lot of current that's needed. But granted, that is given that this thing is driving full forward with some force against it and spinning up the weapon at the same time. So worst case scenario. So this was about the um, best battery that I could find for this application. The reason I went with a six cell mostly because ESCs kind of tend to stop at six cells and then they get a lot more expensive after that. The motors I'm using are kind of rated for six cells. You can obviously go higher voltage, but they're kind of rated for that. And also I don't have a battery charger that does higher than six cells. So it was kind of a lot of those things all together and 24 volts is just a little bit easier to design around. And um, yeah, so that's the battery that I chose. I have two of these batteries and I would just kind of swap them in between competitions. And I found that even after the rumble, which was like five full minutes, I was only down to about 60%. So the capacity of this is plenty and I'm not gonna really be changing anything. The capacity was fine. I could go higher voltage, but I'm actually perfectly fine with how this performed. So if we remove the battery, we can see some of the stuff underneath. So we've got this um, piece of foam here that protects it. This is a um, piece of PLA that was also 3D printed. I went through a couple of these during the competition because they tended to get kind of crushed, but that's totally okay. This absorbed the energy that would normally be going into somewhere else. Um, so this little piece of foam just kind of helped that. There's a piece of foam over here on the side, and then there's a piece of foam against the back to protect it from the back wall of everything. So I'm gonna take that out, and then the battery just kind of unplugs right there. And these are um, XT90 connectors, and I'm using, um, I think, 10 or 12 gauge for everything. I think this might be 10 gauge, and then it distributes out to a 12 gauge. And for both the batteries, I just kind of taped the connectors on the side, and so they just kind of go in like that orientation, and it makes it really easy just to plug them and unplug them as you saw. Underneath the batteries is kind of where all the wiring happens. You can see that from the battery connector, we've got the positive lead that goes into the switch and then goes underneath. And this is the positive distribution here. And then the black one or the negative goes directly under here into the black distribution or the negative power distribution. And I've got a block of foam in between those two and these are both double heat shrinked and I'll get into that later. Um, but that's where all the power distribution happens. It basically goes into these blocks and then goes up here and then out there into the two ESCs. And this whole thing is like an H. And um, once I get some of these components out of the way, I'll just pull the whole thing out and show you that directly. These fans are actually um, 
The first ones got destroyed, and here's what they look like. Um, I went through several iterations of these fans. Every fight, basically, these got broken. I had to replace them. So for the sake of doing this video, I just kind of put in some new ones, but they're actually not connected to anything. I just have the leads um, sitting here. But um, this little lead right here, which is a JST connector, actually goes back into the power distribution. So in theory, all I have to do is re-terminate these, and I can just plug it in. And you can see for this fan assembly, I just have it so that you can just plug it and unplug it really easy because replacing the fans was a common occurrence. So now that you have a better idea of the overall layout, what I'm gonna do is um, disconnect the motors, both here, 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 and there. Um, you can see that I used um, bullet terminals and then also taped over um, all the connections just to keep them from pulling out. So I'm gonna remove the tape, remove the tape, 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 and then this whole um, power system should just pull right out and then you can get a better look at everything. So let me go ahead and do that. And this is what the electronics look like when they're all removed from the robot. It's actually a little bit sad that this is all it takes, but uh, this is what they look like. And um, let's start with the power switch. This is a Wyachi MS05 power switch. I actually debated doing something different. There's a lot of ways to do power switches for these. Um, a lot of people will use an XT plug that they just kind of jumper so that you plug in the plug and that's what um, connects the power. I liked going with the power switch because they just don't really fail. They're a little bit more expensive, but you'd really only have to buy the one and they don't really fail. And it's really nice just having, you know, the Allen key turn it on and off like that. So I went with the Wyachi power switch and I showed kind of the wiring on that. Um, up front for the weapon, I have a left and a right because I'm using the two weapon motors. These are Hobby King Super Simple. Um, these are basically the same thing that's in the red brick. These just don't have the um, BEC or battery eliminator circuit. So these are 190 or 200 amp peak rating, which is easily double what those motors can handle. So I oversize these just because of the intensity of that weapon. I wanted something that was very reliable and I didn't have to worry about. And these performed just fine. Um, this one actually had the motor die on it in the very last uh, part of the rumble. And one of the connectors is actually kind of fused in place. So something happened with this. I haven't tested this out to see if it still works, but I don't really see any signs or any issues that it isn't working. So I'll check that out later. But both of these were properly sized and seemed to work just fine. Uh, you can see all the wires for the receiver just kind of go down that middle channel. That was pretty easy. And then over here we have the two drive ESCs. Uh, the drive ESCs are actually um, Hobby King 80 amp SBECs. I think you can um, find these as uh, F-80 is the model number that you can find these by. These are relatively inexpensive and these actually proved to be pretty reliable once I got the firmware settings correct. Um, I have modified all of these with um, new Simon K firmware, so all of these are opened up and I had to tap into the um, processor and reprogram these. If you check my channel, you can see a whole separate video where I reprogram the ESCs. And for these, I actually attach some heat sink fins onto the um, heat sink or the heat spreader just for extra cooling. I was having some issues with the wrong settings causing these to heat up quite a bit. And once I changed the settings, put the heat sinks on, put the fans on them, I had a lot less issue and these didn't get even warm to the touch. And both of these are just kind of cradled in a little bit of ESD foam like that just to keep them from rattling around as with everything else. Other than that, there's really not a whole lot going on. I'm gonna show you how I did the power distribution. That's pretty much it. So let me um, slice these open and show you what's inside of these. I'm gonna try my absolute best to not cut my hand open on camera. So that's really all there is to it. I just have this really thick heat shrink. Um, that I ran over top of these. 
and as you can see all the wires just go into um, this is a quarter 20 bolt that was tightened down and these are just ring terminals um, some of you actually that follow my channel and whatnot might have seen me posting on Facebook and um, I think on Reddit I was kind of asking how everyone did power distribution and there's a lot of different ways to do this I was actually going to machine like a little aluminum block that everything plugged into and there's all these different ways I was going to do it but this turned out to be the most simple and with two of these side by side underneath the battery it turned out to be a perfect solution and this really isn't going to get broke or fail in any meaningful way so I was pretty happy with how that turned out. I guess the last and final thing to talk about are the actual motors. For the drive, I was using a prop drive V2 4238, 4238, 750 kV. And I'll go into this in more detail, of course, in the drive section. But these were way overkill, so it was absolutely perfect for my needs. This was about three times more power than what is needed for a 30 pounder. And because of that, I was actually running these closer to about 50% in my radio. I actually had it kind of um, throttled back. Um, so these worked perfectly. I'm going to keep these, no problems there. And for the weapon, I was using two of these 50-50 prop drive V2s. So these are a 580 kV, 50 millimeter diameter, 50 millimeter length. And if you watch my channel, you probably saw the video where I reshafted these. So I completely removed the shaft and replaced the 6 millimeter shaft with a 316 stainless eight millimeter shaft and um, these actually survived pretty okay. I had one of them die on me, but I think it was just because I was way over pushing it. Um, it was running for like five solid minutes at almost full power. So I'm gonna just kind of look into that and see what happened. But I was pretty happy with both the motors and I'll go into this in a little bit more detail in the drive and weapon videos. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of all the electronics that I used in crippling depression. For a quick sum up, I was using a Turnigy Graphene 3 amp hour 65C discharge 6S battery. That was feeding into a Wyachi MS05 power switch, 10 gauge wiring, feeding into distribution blocks with ring terminals, feeding into 12 gauge wiring into the four ESCs. For the drive ESCs, I was using Hobby King F80, 80 amp ESCs reprogrammed with Simon K firmware. Those being fed into prop drive V2 4238 brushless motors, one of those per side. And then the other ESCs for the weapon were Hobby King super simple 190 amp ESCs, one of those per side feeding into NTM prop drive V2 5050 brushless motors. And then the whole thing was powered by an FR Sky X4R receiver with telemetry. So hopefully that gives you a really good idea of everything that I used and what you can use for your robot. As always, if you like my videos, check me out on Facebook. You can also check my Patreon page for the channels that I support, as well as supporting my channel. And be sure to check out the next video in this series where I go over my favorite part of the robot, the drive system. See you then. Thanks for watching.